I, a teen male, live with my dad. My mother lives with her new husband and my stepbrother, a young teen, both of whom I've only met once at the wedding. Her new husband doesn't want me to visit her at their place since he's worried about my dad knowing where she lives and visiting and trying to rekindle their past relationship, so she visits me instead. The guy thinks there's less risk with her only being over half an hour each visit and one visit per month. However, she wanted me to spend time with my stepbrother but couldn't bring him over since he's severely allergic to cats, so she asked me if I'd be okay with getting rid of my cat. I told her not. She protested, saying that if I didn't, I wouldn't ever get to know my stepbrother, so I told her I didn't care and would always choose my cat. My mother was rather upset when she left. She said that I shouldn't have been so dismissive of her feelings like that. Not the idiot. Your mother is the one who needs to work on her issues with her clingy, jealous husband. Her insecurity shouldn't result in your having to get rid of a beloved pet. And his logic is baffling. He's jealous of your father and the possibility of your mother getting back together with him, so his solution is to send your mother to your father's house to visit you. Something isn't right there. Excuse me, her only being over half an hour each visit and one visit per month? So you see your mum for six hours a year and she's expecting you to get rid of your cat so your step-sibling can come with her for, what, an hour a year? Or are they planning on offloading him on your family as you're such a good babysitter? Get your dad involved to set some boundaries if he isn't involved already. Your mother is very cruel if she accepts this. Opie's mother is a lunatic who cares nothing for her child. She got rid of Opie for a new husband, so maybe that's why mom doesn't understand why Opie is attached to a cat and unwilling to get rid of it. It's insane. Honey, I'm curious. Does she think you're dismissing her feelings? What about your feelings? She's being pretty damn dismissive of those, and she's supposed to be the adult here. LOL. The issue isn't that you love your cat, who you spend time with, it's that your mother hasn't made you a priority and is trying to pressure you to dilute further the little time you have together. I'm sorry, your mom is letting you down. Update. Am I the idiot for telling my mother I would always choose my cat over my stepbrother? I called her to talk about this. I asked her if her husband was so worried about my dad knowing where she lived, why couldn't she just pick me up and drive me there? Dad doesn't have to know the address. He doesn't have to take me there. She was stumped for a minute before answering, and it just made things worse. She admitted she made up the jealousy issue to hide why her husband doesn't want me over at their place. The guy has a couple of Patek Philippe watches that he's very protective of and is worried I might see it and not be able to help myself. She visits only half an hour a month, not because her husband only allows that much time, but because she was afraid I'd start asking questions. She thought it would hurt me less if I believed that the issue was adult jealousy than her husband thinking I might steal from him. I asked her if she was even bothered to stand up for me and tell him I would never steal his watches. She was silent. Then I said to her that now I'm even more disgusted with her than before when she wanted me to give up a family member for a kid I don't even really know, other than that one meeting at her wedding and that she should be ashamed of herself. She said she was sorry and won't bother me again. So we're done now. No more seeing each other. No contact from now on. Yeah, wow, dude. Sorry, your mom is bad. She and her husband and kid are a really a piece of work. They've never gotten to know you, but label you as a future thief. She doesn't fight for you to be a part of her family. She lies to you to manipulate you. That is horrible. Why couldn't his precious watches be kept in a safe if he's so worried? It sounds like a cover for yet another thing. I'm sorry your mom is such a piece of work. The watch thing is possibly a lie, too. Her husband may be very controlling and didn't want her to have a relationship with you at all. Half an hour is nothing. Her stepson might not even have a cat allergy, either. I wish you and your dad well. You do not need that drama. My sister, young teen, and I, teen female, are not close. She has really bad social skills. She doesn't have any diagnosis like ADHD or autism, but she's never been good with social stuff. She's very intelligent and is a very good problem solver, but she needs to understand that what is easy for her is not easy for everyone. She also lacks the social skills to know or realize that complaining about other people's interests, their lack of skills, etc., is not how you make friends or get people to like you. This has been an issue with her since we were in elementary school and maybe even preschool. She'd win at almost every board game and would ask really bluntly why someone was bad, normally me. 
She'd tell me how easy it was and I should be winning because I'm older. Our parents always bought board games like that, which suited her way more. I hated playing against her because her attitude after winning wasn't fun or easy to be around, and she was like that with others too. One time, our aunt played with us. She's a teacher and my sister basically asked how she could be a teacher when she couldn't win a game against a grammar schooler. I never liked having to spend time with my sister, and I hated playing anything with her even more. She always wanted to spend more time with me, but I avoided that crap as much as I possibly could. Eventually, she started to sit in on me playing video games, and she would try to backseat the game or criticize me for taking so long to finish a puzzle. Or she would literally take the controller out of my hand and do the puzzle for me. She was like that when I had friends over too. Then she got upset when it was clear we didn't want her around. I tried telling her it was rude to insult or interrupt others to help without being asked and to continue when asked to stop. She would say to me it was boring watching someone struggle and everyone should thank her. There are some things she isn't good at and boy, her reactions are strong, like tantrums. Our parents banned charades because my sister couldn't play them to save her life and would get so mad. She's had friends, but all of them eventually drop her once they grow tired of her complaining about stuff they like, makeup, music, movies, sports, and indirectly calling them dumb. She's lonely now because I never hang out with her, she has no friends, and even our cousins don't want to know her. My parents have been on my case about hanging out with my friends, not including my sister, and how I never make time for her anymore. They said I could and should be helping her way more. The other day I told him it was their job to help her, not mine. They said we're sisters, and yet I act like I don't like her. The truth is, I don't. I don't know if I ever liked her, really. But I really don't like her now, and I hate every second I spend with her. I didn't tell my parents this, but saying it was their job to help my sister and not mine really made them angry. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. It's your parents' job, and honestly, she probably does need screening for autism. However, if she's made it to her teen years without several... Other people are not as quick as you at X, but that doesn't mean you jump in and or berate them. Discussions from your parents, teachers and other adults, there is probably a limited window left for her to modify her behavior. You've done everything you should be doing as her sister, telling her that her behavior isn't acceptable. Anything beyond that is in your parents' realm of care. Sometimes people need the consequences of their actions spelled out for them. And even if your sister didn't always have this horrible attitude, you're not obligated to include her when hanging out with your friends. This is an issue your parents have created by not addressing her rude behavior properly when she was younger. Now she's in her teens and I think it won't be easy to correct. She needs therapy. This is classic autistic behavior and she needs a specialist to help her understand. Your parents are doing her no favors by coddling her. I would let her lose at charades. It's a good way to help her understand how she makes others feel, as she lacks the empathy to understand it intuitively. Trust me, as someone who once was that child, your parents are doing her no favors. I, 23 female, have been dating my boyfriend 25 for a year and a half now. We're very happy together, rarely argue, and are very much in love. For context, I'm a first-generation immigrant from a third-world country living in a European country. My boyfriend, on the other hand, is a native. I study robotics, and he studied linguistics and is currently unemployed. Anyway, on to the issue. I've met his family a handful of times now, and at first they were very welcoming and lovely. I thought they liked me, and then they started making comments like, Oh, you must be very happy you ended up with a guy like boyfriend, and you're such a lucky girl to be dating boyfriend. I would smile and say I am very happy, and he is indeed a thoughtful, loving man. This went on for a while until eventually I just blurted out, oh well, he's lucky to be with me just as much as I'm lucky to be with him. His mom laughed and said not exactly and told me that I have to admit the perks of dating a native and how men like him usually don't date girls like me. I found this very offensive and told her I do love her son, but he's unemployed and will probably be for a very long time because of his useless degree. I told her that if someone was lucky, it would be him. Obviously, she got very mad and kicked me out, and I gladly left. My boyfriend wasn't present at that time, but I suspect his mother told him everything, except the part where she was very racist, because he called me and was angry that I'd said he's lucky to be with me, and that his degree is useless as if I'm better than him. I pointed out that it's hypocritical of him to say when his family does that to me every day and he never stood up to them. 
Anyway, now thinking back on it, I think I shouldn't have said that about him, and that my grievance is with his family and not him. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. His mother was obviously trying to make you feel less than. Your boyfriend probably agrees with his mother. If he doesn't, he's spineless and doesn't stick up for you. Either way, he's not a good partner. He should have shut that down the first time. It won't get better. The fact that he allows his parents to mistreat you will only get worse if you two have children. OP, your boyfriend and his family all think they're superior to you. You can do much better than all of them, including the boyfriend. I hope you dump him and find someone who is worth your love. Someone who will jump to defend you the very second his family steps out of line. Useless degree, huh? Well, at least he knows how you feel now. You are the idiot. You're not great if you can't defend yourself without insulting another person. Seriously, if the first thing you do to defend yourself is to attack your boyfriend, who isn't even present, I take a good look at your relationship. It's time to reconsider whether you love him or not. Also, at least now he knows how you really feel about him. I, 29 female, have always been open about not wanting children with people from the first date. I don't want to waste my or their time. I met my fiancé, 32 male, about two and a half years ago online. We had a lot in common, including not wanting children. He proposed four months ago, and a few days ago we were at his parents' house for dinner, and his mother commented about his sister, who is pregnant, which led to us talking about having children. When children come up, I usually just change the subject ASAP, but before I could find an opportunity, my fiancé answered that we wouldn't start trying until after the wedding and after we had a house so we wouldn't have to worry about moving while I was pregnant. I was surprised, but figured maybe he hadn't discussed not wanting children with his family and he just didn't want to talk about it. After, when we were driving home, I made a comment saying maybe we should tell his family now we aren't having children to avoid talking about it down the road, and then he told me he wasn't sure about being child-free. I was shocked and unsure what to say, except to inform him that I was sure and to ask when he started thinking he might want children. He told me he was never sure and now thought he wanted them. I was hurt that he lied to me because when we started dating, I was very clear that I would never want children, and if he wasn't sure, it wouldn't work. We argued, and he basically told me he thought I might change my mind, but he didn't know that I was sterilized at 25. When I was 22, despite using birth control, I got pregnant and ended it. Afterward, the stress of that possibly happening again was too much, and it began to take a toll on my mental and physical health. To make a long story short, after two years of looking from doctor to doctor, I was able to find one willing to sterilize an unmarried, childless, early 20s-year-old woman. My mental health improved overnight, as soon as I had a date scheduled, and I no longer had so much anxiety. This was one and a half years before I met my fiancé. I never said so because it doesn't matter because I don't want children. I told him that I couldn't have children because I was sterilized, and then he got mad at me for not telling him and that he might not have dated me if he knew. He called me an idiot and dropped me off at home and went to stay with a friend. At this point, I'm not hopeful for the relationship. I am sad about it because I do love him, but I was clear about children from the start because it's a deal breaker. What I want to know is if I'm the idiot for not telling him that I can't have children. I've gotten messages from his friends saying I am, not that I worry about their biased opinions, but a couple of my friends have said I should have told him, while others were on my side, that it doesn't matter because I don't want children. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. I hear he's mad because he won't be able to convince you to have children now. He heard you say you never want kids, but figured that was the start of a negotiation. You have zero to be guilty about. You told him, I don't want to have my own kids. Why would you need to go into detail as to how that can't happen? It doesn't matter. You should pack his stuff and tell him it's ready for pickup. Any person who wants to try and guilt trip you or to gaslight you isn't worth wasting any more time on. Mourn the loss of that relationship and find someone who will accept your truth. He likely didn't even plan on convincing her. All he had to do was get her pregnant by accident. He's mad he doesn't have full control over this. OP, you were very clear you didn't want children. The fact you're sterilized is irrelevant. If you changed your mind, you could still adopt. But you aren't interested in changing your mind, so it doesn't matter if you're sterilized or not. It's a no-child zone. He just gave you a golden opportunity to leave before you got married. I'd take it. My daughter is 20 and dropped out of college. My son is graduating college this year. 
I was asking him what he wanted to do for graduating. My youngest also got into the honor society in high school, so we're going for dinner soon. So really, everyone is doing something, and I notice my daughter getting more upset when other people bring up their accomplishments. She lives at home, and sadly, she hasn't had much going on in the accomplishment area. Her birthday just passed, which we did celebrate, but that is not the same as getting dinner or something for an accomplishment. I know it's rough for her. The issue was she approached me and told me she wanted a celebration dinner. I asked for what, and she didn't give me an answer. I told her we would only do a celebration dinner when she had something to celebrate. This started an argument where she thought I wasn't being fair and everyone else was getting celebrated. I told her it was fair and she would get celebrated when she had an accomplishment. She called me a jerk and my oldest thinks I should just give in and give her dinner for anything. Not the idiot. She didn't even have an answer for what there was to celebrate. A 20-year-old college dropout wants a party because her siblings, who have actively accomplished something, are being recognized and she thinks it's unfair. And then she called you a jerk. Life will kick her in the balls, so to speak, if she expects everything to be her version of fair, which is actually not fair at all. Time for the daughter to put her big girl pants on and adult. I disagree. People stuck in severe depression need help and support, not criticism. OP, you are the idiot. Do you only see school-related things as accomplishments? School is not for everyone. But is it normal for your daughter to drop out like this, or was it out of the blue? You say she doesn't have much going on right now. What do you mean? No job, no prospect, no school, no friends? What is she doing during the day? Is she depressed? Maybe that's just what it is here. If she is depressed, getting up is an accomplishment. This was a missed opportunity to understand what was going on with her.